Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the occasion of the crowning of the statue of Our Lady today, I would like to speak about the glorious mystery, the fifth glorious mystery, the crowning of Our Lady as Queen of Heaven and Earth. If we want to love our Lord, if we want to grow closer to Him, Mary is the surest way to this. There is no one who wants you closer to Christ than Mary, because there is no one closer to Christ than she is. The story of our re redemption begins with her, begins through God's creation at the Annunciation. God could have come in any way he chose, but it was through his creation that he chose to do so. The same way that you and I came to the world through our mothers. So did redemption and God. Our Lady was completely open to God. She was the new Eve. Eve said no, Mary said yes. And immaculately conceived, she never heard the lie of the devil that God could be a problem, which so many of us here. She was the freest of all people. But this can be a question for many. How can she be an example of freedom of faith? Because how could somebody be Catholic and be free? We may have all heard this. But as St. John Paul II says, we are at our freest when we say yes to truth. Fortin Sheen once said, millions of people hate what they think is the Catholic Church but few, if any, hate what is actually the Catholic Church. And the same can be said of devotion to our Blessed Mother. The first question which many might pose to us, that Protestants as well might pose to us, is, well, where is this idea of Mary being queen in the Bible? But well, we have to take closely the words of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We must hold to the traditions taught by us either by letter or handed on by word. These are the traditions of the church. The title of Mary as queen is drenched in the scriptures. Jesus is of the line of David. And in the Davidic kingdom, the queen is not the wife of the king, rather because he has many wives. It was the mother of the king who was queen. She holds the title of queen which allowed her to function as counsel to the king. When we reflect on the queenship of Mary, we see that her queenship was not won in battle, nor in politics, nor through fame or wealth, but through the bearing of a child. One of our church fathers, John, Damas John Damascene, said, when, we be when she became mother of our creator, she became queen of every creature. Mary's queenship is derived from her motherhood, a motherhood which began at her immaculate conception. When Mary was formed in her mother's womb, God formed the perfect mother for him to be born of. God prepares Mary's flesh that one day will receive the conception by the power of the Holy Spirit of the Son of God the Word made flesh, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the whole universe. If Jesus is the King of the world, Mary is the Queen. If Jesus is the King of Heaven, Our Lady is the Queen of Heaven. Regina Celi, Queen of Heaven, and is her whom we crown today. This, though, does not mean that she is God. Like you and me, she is a child of God and desperately needs a savior, 
as she exclaims in the Magnificat, God is her savior. But it is, it is her example, and even more importantly, her intercession that we need now. That is why Saint Blessed Joseph Alamano said, he who wants to reach sanctity without Our Lady flies without wings. Mary's intercession is extremely powerful because she is our Queen Mother and the King will never refuse the Queen. As we see in that book of Kings, David said to his mother, Bathsheba, who sat at the throne at his right hand side, he made this request, whatever request you make of me, mother, I will not refuse you. Jesus too will never refuse his mother. And we actually see this played out deeply in the scriptures, particularly in that famous story of the wedding feast at Cana. Mary noticed that the wine had run out and mentions it to Jesus. They have run out of wine. Why? Because this happens to us all. This happens to humanity, we run out. And we look to God to fill it when we run out. And they went to Mary. And Jesus says something very interesting. And Jesus responds to her. And some of the translations might be confusing. What is this to you, woman? But the Greek is very clear. It says, what is this to you and to me? Jesus is basically telling our Blessed Lady, if I change this water, which is used for the purification rites of the Jewish faith, and I change it into the wine at the wedding feast, do you know what this means? This is going to lead you and me on a journey where I change this world by my blood from a place of penance to a place of rejoicing. This is only going to lead to one place, Mother. This is going to lead to the cross. If I do this, it involves you too. And then Our Lady instructs the servants to do whatever he tells them. Our Lady was fully aware of the reality of the cross from when she brought the child Jesus to the temple at the presentation when Simeon took the child into his arms and blessed God, and then he looked at her and said, a sword of sorrow will pierce your own heart. Simon prophesies that the Blessed Virgin Mary, that she would endure tremendous trial, suffering and persecution. Because of this, she is evermore the intercessor for those who are in need. Devotion to Our Lady should be paramount should be endorsed and promoted to keep us firm in our faith. Our Lady from antiquity has been known as the touchstone of orthodoxy, that if we kept devotion to her, we would keep a very true understanding of our Lord, that we would not have a skewed idea of who he is. She is in the intercessor of situations which seem lost. She is the intercessor of people who seem to be beyond hope. Our world and our land need to be changed, but they will not be changed unless they are brought to her. We need to bring the most damaged in our society to our Blessed Lady. As St. Thomas Aquinas says, as mariners are guided into the port by a shining star, so Christians are guided to heaven by Mary. This is our role as followers of Christ in the world. We must pray, pray for everyone, not only pray for the good things, but also to pray most especially for the most wicked. Who is going to pray for the changing of the world if we don't? How are people going to be converted if we don't bring them to God through our Mary? We need to pray for the most wicked. We need to pray for the drug pushers. We need to, need to pray for the abusers. How many of you are actually praying for them? For the rapists, for the burglars, for the abusers, for the drug pushers, the pimps, whatever they are. They must be prayed for. Their souls are invaluable. And this is how the world has changed. Their souls have deep value which is to say that they are indispensable. These people 
are invaluable because we do not get to set our worth. We do not get to change our worth. God has set that. The matter has been sealed in Christ's blood. If the servants at Cana knew to go to Mary above everybody else at that wedding, so must we. If they went to her, not knowing all that we know about Our Lady, but yet there was that sense within them that they could go to her and that she would somehow sort the problem. Let us do the same. Let us bring to her all these people of the world who need conversion because this is what she wants. She desires the conversion of all to her divine son. Today we crown someone who was victorious, victorious in suffering, victorious in trial, victorious in the burdens of life. And she stands there as she stood at the foot of the cross when everyone else had abandoned our Lord, she stood there. Many depictions of Our Lady in art have her fainting. No, the scripture said she stood. And so she stands today. And as we crown her, may we realize that what we do, that we crown her, not just because of her joys, but also because of the sorrows that she endured. And by honoring Our Lady, may she also pray for us. By honoring Our Lady, may we be inspired to live a life of faith, hope, and love. But let us depend upon her intercession. I ask you to call to mind now a situation or someone you think is deeply wicked in our world or who are causing great damage in this town of Warrington or in the country or in the world. Call to them now to mind and let us present them to Our Lady as we recite together the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.